Hague Pit, the last one in Cumbria to shut down. It became a museum. Now, the museum has gone. The William Pit at Whitehaven, Cumberland, runs out a long way under the sea. For a coastline and community littered with the scars and ghosts of lost industry, a new coal mine promising 500 direct jobs and 2,000 more connected, well, it's a lifeline. And it'll give uh, a lot of these ex-miners uh, uh, work as well. I know there's quite a few who would like to go back down. I think it's a great thing. Great sure. thing, yeah. Why is, why is that? Local employment. It'll give people jobs. Just great stuff, I think. Climate emergency? Worried about emissions, anything like that? Burning well, the coal? End of the world? <laughs> well, if you, if you look into it and, uh, and you, you read what they're saying, it, 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 they're talking about being like carbon neutral and that type of thing. But, so, from what they say, it, it doesn't sound too by that respect. A global first, a carbon neutral coal mine. That's what Cumbria has been told. We'll come back to that. Elected for a second term, the local independent mayor is a passionate advocate for West Cumbria and for the new mine. At that mine opening up um, in one of the poorest wards in the whole of the UK is transformational for people. You know, it's giving people life opportunities. The mine will have a very, very positive impact on this area. It'll have an absolute minimal impact um, in terms of making the climate situation worse. And this is just how badly West Cumbria needs jobs. Behind that fence is the office where the technical people are working on the spec for the new mine. And on the fence here, a notice which, in the nicest possible way, says to people, please stop coming here and asking for a job. Send your CV to the company headquarters. The pit will be here on the site of an old chemical works. The mine company refuses either to be interviewed or answer our questions. But the county council unanimously supports the mine and makes a claim for it, the like of which the world has never seen. Cumbria County Council states the mine will be, quote, broadly carbon neutral. So we cross Cumbria to Lancaster University to try and find out what a broadly carbon neutral coal mine could be. Well, it's an interesting concept. Um, it's pretty well impossible to think of it. I mean, you could, make, you could make the case, arguably, for carbon neutrality in the extraction of the coal itself. But the, and, and the planning application makes a, makes a big play of, of the extraction process and the, and the transport emissions from the coal. So long but as you don't set fire to the coal? Yeah, the big deal is the setting fire to the coal. That's where the problem is, and that's the bit that's glossed over. Cumbria County Council say they're refusing all interviews because the mine is under judicial review. The Judicial Office told us this does not prevent them commenting. So, we called Geoffrey Cook, Planning Committee Chairman, who said, I've nothing to say about this project. When we went to his house, he refused to come to the door. Council leader Stuart Young didn't return our calls in person. The county council, silent. The mining company, silent. So could the mayor make any sense of this carbon neutral claim? Cumbria, the Cumbrian people, Cumbrian voters have been told explicitly this is a carbon neutral coal mine. Now you know and I know there is no such thing as a carbon neutral coal mine. Um, well, it's not a claim I've made personally. Um, you know, what I'm, you know, the, well, do you, dis do you agree with that? Um, I, I agree with the, uh, the coal mine going ahead and the thing, you know. No, do you I, agree you know, with it being carbon neutral? I mean, this is a crucial point. Well, I, you know, I agree with the county working towards a carbon neutral uh, status. Or do you believe? Are you well, telling I, 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 voters I, I, here that it is carbon well, neutral? What I can say is that I've never seen that stated anywhere, and I've certainly never seen it stated by West Cumbria Mining, who I've, I've dealt with on it's, a, it's in council on a, papers, on a regular they state basis. It. Put um, it in Cumbria County Council, well, you know, you'd need to ask them. You'd say in that statement, it's the first time I've ever heard it, actually. The mine owners and council argue that sending Cumbrian coal to UK steel plants is greener than transporting US or Australian coal to our blast furnaces. They say, if the coking coal from Whitehaven proved more competitive because it's located closer to steel manufacturing plants of the UK, then mining operations elsewhere would be very likely to reduce their output by a similar level of production. So does mining Cumbrian coal really mean American or Australian or any foreign coal stays in the ground? The basic 
economic premise that the coal from Cumbria will substitute for coal from other sources is simply wrong. Why? Because when a supply of a commodity increases, especially if it is going into a market at a cheaper rate than the supply of a similar commodity, what happens is that either demand stays the same, in which case the overall price of the commodity will fall, so steel would become cheaper, and of course if steel becomes cheaper then the demand for steel will increase. So the basic economic assumption behind the Council's stated decision that the demand for steel is constant is simply unfounded. Steel industry sources told Channel 4 News don't rely on us Cumbria, foreign coal may be better for our furnaces, moreover we're getting out of coal as fast as possible because of the climate emergency. Almost all of uh, European steel manufacturing, it has targets now to be zero carbon by 2050, which will be only, so zero carbon by 2050, which will be only halfway through the lifetime of this mine, making it a complete white elephant. So Cumbria stands as a national test case. How do we take the hard decisions to get to carbon neutral by 2050? Current policymakers are putting jobs for the present generation before the absolutely basic vital interests of future generations everywhere. Because if we don't get a grip on climate change, we can be sure that the future for those future generations is much less rosy than it might be. And it's particularly disappointing in the UK, one of the richest countries in the world, a country that is already very near to full employment, that we feel that an extra 500 jobs is worth sending this kind of message around the world in the year that we're hosting the COP26. It's a massive hypocrisy. Is it? Well, the government's hosting the vital COP26 climate summit in November. The same government supports a new coal mine here and yet bans investment in foreign coal. The British government will no longer provide any new direct official development assistance, investment, export credit or trade promotion for thermal coal mining or coal power plants overseas. Hypocrisy? The government's hosting the most important conference of our lives, attacking foreign coal, defending domestic coal. Boris Johnson's parliamentary private secretary is a newly elected MP and supporter of the mine. Right now, right here, the common sense approach is to reduce the carbon emissions as much as we can, and we can do that through transportation reduction, we can do that through world-class mining equipment and we can do that through the measures that the government is putting in place to reduce the carbon footprint without damaging the economy. It is Cumbria now, somewhere else soon. The UK's big dilemma. Who wins when the decisions on carbon get hard? The current working generation or the world we bequeath to our children and grandchildren? Alex Thompson, Channel 4 News, West Cumbria.